Hey guys, it's Rogue Bag. Guess what I did today? I went shopping for bananas. Shout out to my cousins in my Facebook gardening groups. I am making this video because of you. Many of you have requested that I show you how to how I make my banana sludge that I use as fertilizer. So before we begin, make sure that you like, subscribe, turn on your alerts, and comment if you have anything to add or have any questions. I have had many people ask how I got my Tabasco plant to grow over a yard while in a container and bear so much fruit. Or they ask how I got my aloe vera so strong and to sprout multiple pups. Stay tuned. I'm about to share my biggest secret with I'll you. Cue the intro. Welcome to Man Cuisine. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. So, before we begin, there's a few things that you will need. First, bananas, water, a blender or a food processor. I prefer a food processor. A spoon and optional cinnamon. And I'll show you what that will be used for later. So, this is a banana. We're not going to eat it. <laughs> Why? Because I have an aversion to texture. Bananas are disgusting to me. But my plants love them. And there's one main reason for that. That is your N P. K. That is your nitrogen, your phosphate, and your potassium. Bananas have very low nitrate. The nitrogen level is non-existent for the most part. But they have very high potassium. Bananas actually have the highest organic source of potassium at 42%. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, if you look at some of your normal fertilizers, average for fertilizer, right? This is an all-purpose fertilizer that I use. When you look at the back of your fertilizer, you're gonna see a few things. This is all, this is your guaranteed analysis. Right here, these numbers, this is your NPK. This all-purpose fertilizer is 1257. That's 12% nitrogen, 5% um, phosphate, and 7% pota potassium. If you're ready, I'm ready to show you how to make my sludge. First step, I add the water to the processor. Then I add a couple of bananas. Once I turn the processor on, I begin adding more bananas and peels. Yes, I said both. I know many tutorials tell you to use the peels and soak in water. Well, this is not those tutorials. I want to make sure I get all the nutrients for my babies. Let me tell y'all, banana is everything. The scientific name literally translates to fruit of the wise men. As bananas decompose, they add that 42% of potassium to the soil. They also add calcium, phosphorus, magnesium to the soil as a slow release fertilizer. The balance of them being potassium rich compared to nitrogen makes them excellent for tomatoes, peppers, and flowers. The calcium prevents blossom in rot in tomatoes. The magnesium helps photosynthesis. Sodium helps water flow between the cells. And aphids hate banana peels. Now remember I told y'all that I would tell you about the cinnamon? Cinnamon is a natural fungicide that helps most plants root. Right before you're done, you can add a few shakes of cinnamon to it. This is completely optional. It works as a natural rooting hormone. Ants, gnats, and mosquitoes also don't like the smell of cinnamon, so that is a bonus. As you add more bananas and peels, continue to add water until you have the consistency that you like. So let's talk consistency. This is literally a point of preference. I like mine to be kind of like oatmeal, a thick, 
creamy oatmeal. And there you have it. That's the sludge. Let me show you how I put it in my plant. This is one of my aloe veras who have thrived from my banana peel sludge. This one actually started as a pup itself from the mother plant. And now, as you can see, there are little pups growing on it. Okay, for starters, I like to remove like the first two, maybe three inches of soil. Careful not to disturb the roots. This is where adding cinnamon comes into play. Since you may disturb the roots, this helps prevent root rot or your roots being damaged and helps them grow back strong. So the next time you have more roots and even when you transplant or decide to separate the pups, they have stronger roots also. Now, if you're doing this, say for my Tabasco plant, I would do the same thing, removing the outer edges of it two to three inches making sure not to hit the roots. This is the same thing for any plant that you use it for. Make sure you pay attention to your NPK on your plant to see if they are nitrogen or potassium rich or even phosphate rich. Now that I have created a little trench around my plant, all I do is I literally spread it like peanut butter all the way around inside of the trench to make sure that it hits all sides of the root system on the plant. Don't leave any higher up. You don't want to um, attract any other bugs or any fungus that could sit on the top. I know you have the cinnamon in there, but we want to stay careful and make sure that our plant remains healthy. So this is how it looks when I'm done. And as soon as I'm done, I just take the soil that I removed from the plant before and add it back around the plant make sure that it's even even if I cover up some of my pups it's fine they will grow back through the soil it's okay this is a process that I don't do often maybe twice a year because you don't want to over fertilize your plant I make sure to add water when I am finished adding back all of the soil so that it can almost activate the process, kind of merging the soil and the banana together. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more from Main Cuisine, please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on your alerts. Also, hit us up on all of our social media platforms. Send us photos, tag us in your photos, tell us what you want to see from us because this channel is for you. Bye, cousins.